but they just could never receive your compliment? Like, like for example, you, I, I'm, I'm going to use my, my good church boy swag real quick. Praise the Lord, woman of God. How you doing? You look mighty beautiful today, right? Mm -hmm. And see, a person like that, they say something like, oh, I don't feel pretty. I don't, I don't feel it. And you know what? So there's nothing more discouraging to somebody who wants to build a relationship than talking to somebody who doesn't believe in them, believe in themselves. You know, it, thank, thank you. I appreciate that. It's hard to build something with somebody who does not even believe that they are attractive themselves. And see, here's the thing you must understand. When you give off signs of low self-esteem, you put yourself in a position to be a victim. Because there are people who prey on people. Who, you know, oh, you, you're, you're truly pretty. And you, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I've met women who are beautiful. I'm just be honest with you. I thought they were beautiful, and I told them they were beautiful, and by the time they explained to me how they're not beautiful, I didn't think they were beautiful. <laughs> I said, you know what, you can have it, God bless you, stay single. Because <laughs> you, you're wearing your love off. So that's, that's the first, first example of love off. The second example of love off is this. I don't know if you all do this in California, but in, in Atlanta, there are women I don't understand why they do this. They post, uh, you know, post about wanting to be in a relationship. They talk about it all the time. But they have a ring that they buy that they put on their ring finger and they wear it around. Not that they're married or engaged, but that is their leave me alone ring. Maybe y'all haven't seen it. I know people who do. And the purpose of the leave me alone ring is when I come around, if I'm not in the mood, if you see the ring, you're not going to talk to me. And here's the thing that you got to understand about that. You won't fool around and see the person that you really like. Right. They're going to see that ring and they're going to leave you alone. That's right. I saw a woman one time, she was so pretty. And all I, all I could think was, Jesus, tell me she ain't married. And Jesus, just, <laughs> oh, right now. I, and you know what I did? I looked at her hands. I said, let me, let me see. Let me see hey, baby. <laughs> And when I saw that she wasn't, that she didn't have a ring, I said, I can talk to her. But see, a lot of times we do things to hide, right? And what we don't understand is that we are turning off the people who could possibly be our answer to prayer. My. And then there's a, a, a third uh, version of love off. And I think on the first two, I talked about women pretty hard. I'm going to talk about the men now. Uh, I'm going to give the ladies a break. The, the third type of love off I want to talk about are the people who just have nothing but stupid stuff to say. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you for a second. Too many times I hear women talk about how a man came up to her and said, girl, I see you as my wife. The Lord told me that you are, you are it. You, I saw it in my spirit. You are, you are my wife. And here's, here's my problem with that. You was doing good right up until you said that. Yeah. I mean, just. You dressed pretty well. Your breath wasn't too bad. You know, Not too you bad. pretty cool. You know, I found out you got a job. But as soon as he started talking about something, Lord showed me you my first lady. It's just like, oh, forget it. Because his yeah. the spirit speaks both ways. Right. Don't Expressly. Come about, don't come talking about the spirit showed me I'm your husband in the dream. If I'm your husband, he would show me too. Right. Can, can I get a witness? Yes, sir. And so the first affirmation is, I am a good receiver of love. Remember that in order to really have the love that you want, you have to first be able to receive it. Amen. Second affirmation I want, I want to talk about real quick. Hear, hear this and I want you to say it with me. I am aware of what I need in a relationship. I, I am, am aware, aware of, of what, what I, I need, need in a relationship. In a relationship. I, uh, most of my life, in church, I always heard something that I didn't understand until recently was, was, was ridiculous. I used to always hear women say, I'm looking for my Boaz. Looking for my Boaz. And I never understood what that meant because I never really read the book of Ruth. So I didn't really know what that meant. So, you know, I hear women talking about, I'm looking for my Boaz. And so when I were asking them, what does that mean? That meant that they were looking for the perfect guy. And 
my brother wrote a book mm -hmm. by, the, by the name of Boaz's dad. My brother's Auto Martin. Mr. I think he's preached for a few of those conferences. And so when I started studying the book of Ruth, I found out that the relationship between Boaz and Ruth was not a love story. Right. Mm -hmm. It was a business deal. My. You know, and when I started looking at the details of, of the story, I found out first off, Ruth said nicer things to her mother-in-law <coughs> than she said to her husband. Right. If you read it, uh, when, when um, Naomi's husband died and, and the daughters, I mean, the sons of, of her daughter-in-law died, um, Ruth said to Naomi, she said, Doesn't he look where good? you go, I'm going. Your people will be my people. Where you die, I'll die. If you read the whole book, she never said any of that to Boaz. No. Nope. For those of you who don't know the story of Boaz and Ruth, I'm going to tell you real quick. So, Naomi was the mother-in-law of Ruth. Naomi lost her husband. Ruth lost her husband. After both husbands died, Naomi told Ruth, she said, hey, listen, let's go back to, um, she said, matter of fact, I want you to go back to the land of your mother. I want you to leave me um, and just go on. I'll be fine. I'll take care of myself. Ruth said to Naomi, she said, if you don't go out, don't go out. Back. He could have gone out the back. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, the camera stuff. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> I'm a man, I love you. So, back to wherever I was in the story. So, so Naomi says to Ruth, she said, listen, go back to the land of your mother. Leave me be. I'm messing fine. the scope up. Ruth said, she said, listen, I'm not leaving you. You know, we're gonna be tight fat. We're gonna be friends. I'm never leaving you. So they went back to the back to where um, Ruth. I mean, I'm sorry, Naomi was originally from. And what happened was, uh, because Ruth decided that she wanted to take care of Naomi, she said to her, she said, "Listen, I'm gonna go out and get a job." So she went into a field of a man by the name of Boaz. Boaz Caesar. He looks at one of his workers and said, "Hey, who was that in, in the field?" The worker says, "That is the daughter-in-law of Naomi." Naomi's husband died. Listen, all she's doing is helping take care of her mother-in-law. Boaz was an older man. He said, okay, I'm really impressed by the fact that she is taking care of her mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So because she's taking care of her mother-in-law, yeah, I'm going to let her work here for free. I'm not going to give her any problems, right? So Ruth and Boaz meet up. Ruth says to Boaz, she says, Boaz, why are you so kind to me? Boaz says to Ruth, he says, listen, the only reason I'm so kind to you is because I appreciate what you get for your mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So because of how kind you were to your mother-in-law, you can work on my property. So Ruth went back to Naomi, her mother-in-law, and said, hey, listen, I found a job working for Boaz. Naomi says to Ruth, you know, we need a kinsman redeemer. Being that this is a young room, let me explain what that means. When people, when men died, it was the responsibility of a man that was close to the family to take on his household to keep his family name going, and to make sure that his property was taken care of. So what happened was, um, when Naomi found out that she was working for Boaz, she said, listen, Boaz is actually one of our relatives, and Boaz can become our kinsman redeemer, which means that he can take over the property that my husband had, and he can keep the family name going. So she says to Ruth, she says, Ruth, I want you to go to Boaz, and I want you to basically ask him if he will be the kinsman redeemer for our family. So Ruth does exactly what Naomi says. She goes to him and says, hey, will you be our kinsman redeemer? Which means that you're going to keep our, our name going and you're going to take care of our household. He's right? doing so good. So what happened then was Boaz, and this, this is the part of the story that really kicks me. Boaz says to Ruth, he said, he said listen, this is what I'll do. I know a man who can be your redeemer. Now, if he becomes your redeemer, that means he's going to marry you as well. He said, if he doesn't become your redeemer, then I will. Now, think about that for a second. Does that really sound like a love story? No. What he basically said was, if he don't take you, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, listen, I, I told you about the story. Let me put it in terms that we understand. If he don't take you to lunch, I got you. Right. If he don't take you to the movies, to see Central Intelligence, <laughs> I got you. Right. <laughs> If he don't take you bowling, I got you. 
And so the next day rolls around, and um, Boaz finds the man that he was talking about. He says, hey, man, come here. I want to talk to you real quick. He said, you know, uh, Ruth and Naomi, listen, they need a redeemer for their property. Will you be that guy? My man says, I'll do it. So after he says he'll do it, Boaz explains to him, he says, look, for you to do this, that means that you will also have to marry Ruth. My man says, I ain't down with that because if I marry Ruth, that will mess up some business that I have coming to me. So because of that, Boaz says, all right, I'll be the redeemer. At, the, at this part of the story, if you look at it in the Bible, there was no celebration. There was no crazy thing where, where, where Ruth was standing at the door like, Boaz, my redeemer, thank you for redeeming me. <laughs> it was none of that. There was no, Yay. there was no, uh, you know, it was no argument about why he said that somebody else could redeem her instead of him. It was none of that because this was a business deal. Mm -hmm. This was not a romantic love story. This was business. So with that being said, I felt that I needed to first help you understand that there is a difference between saying, I'm looking for my Boaz. Right. Because Boaz is really not what you want. Boaz was old. Why do you want an old man? Really? <laughs> okay. We'll okay. But I want to talk about a man in the Bible who every single woman should want a man like him. And every man should want a woman who has the heart of him. Now, when I say his name, Many of you are not going to understand it. You're not going to even believe it. You're not even like, why, why this person? The person I'm talking about is Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus. Yes. Let me explain why I say that. <laughs> every woman wants a Joseph. Yes. And every man wants a Josephine. Yes. All right? Here's why you want a Joseph instead of a Boaz. Joseph believed and the legitimacy of what was inside of Mary yes. when nobody else would. My, right. you better talk. Right. My question to you is this. My question for you is this. Who believes in you? My. This is a woman, listen, I think we take the Bible and we use it in like a fairy tale fashion right. of just these cute imaginary stories, but we don't really look at it for what it really is. <laughs> This is a woman who got pregnant right. and said the Holy Ghost did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I got a younger sister, and if she came to my parents and said, right. Dad, right. I got a baby on the way. Mm -hmm. But listen, listen, listen. I didn't inform people. Jesus did. <laughs> <laughs> I promised before God. Yeah. And all of these wonderful witnesses. Right. Things are not going to play out the way she wants it to. <laughs> because what makes this special is he believed in what was in her. When nobody else did. Let me tell you all a story. And, and not only do you want to date somebody or marry somebody one day who is like that, but you want to be friends with people like that. Right? Yes. Um, I remember last year I told my family, I said, listen, um, early, early last year, I, I went to my family and said, listen, I found my passion in life. I love motivational speaking. I love to speak. I love to give people a reason to live. I love to inspire people. And my family did something this past Christmas that blew me away. This past Christmas was the greatest Christmas of my life. And I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, I have three living grandparents. The youngest of the three is 90 years old. Wow. All three of them were at my parents' house for Christmas. So that alone is, oh man, this is special. You don't know how many more of those you have, right? And so, and the second reason why the past Christmas was the best ever was because my mother, my father, and my brother, they bought me what I consider to be prophetic gifts. And what do I mean when I say that? When they presented the gift to me, and by the way, my sister got me a wonderful gift as well. But when they presented the gift to me, they expressed what the purpose of that gift was. They said, my mother gave me a, uh, a brand new MacBook computer for Christmas. She said, listen, I want you to have this computer because you're going to be traveling. And yeah. you need something to write your speeches on. Yes. And so because of where you're going, my. I want you to have something that you can write your next book on. Yes. See, I already wrote a book. 
But let me, let me tell you something. When you have a dream, you have something that you want to do, you do it on whatever you can find. Right. I wrote my first book on a borrowed computer. And so because of that, my mother said, here's a brand new computer. Because of where you're going, you need this. So my dad popped up. He said, oh, yeah. And um, hey, son, your mom got you that computer. Here's a nice coach book bag that you can carry your computer in. Because you're, you're going to be traveling. You're going to be speaking. And you need to look like you got something. Yeah. And then, a little later on, my, my father presented me another gift. He said, son, this is a travel bag. He said, I want you to put all your clothes in this so that when you go, you can travel and you, you, know, you don't have to look raggedy. You look like somebody. Mm -hmm. And then my brother, he presented me a box. And um, they, didn't, they didn't plan this. It just it was weird how it just happened. He gave me a box. He said, George, he said, open the box. I opened, the, I opened, I'm sorry, I took the paper off and it was a Gucci box. So I'm like, okay, this is nice. I didn't know what it was, <laughs> it was nice. And when I opened up the box, it was a Gucci tie on the inside. And he said, George, that is a very expensive tie. He said, let me tell you something about that tie. He said, because of where you're going, when you have a photo shoot, I want you to wear that tie. Yeah. He said, when you go to big places to speak and inspire people, I want you to wear that tie. He said, because I believe in you so much that I'm buying you something that symbolizes where you're going. Right. Now, the truth of the matter is, at this time, when they bought these, what I consider to be prophetic gifts, I didn't have no uh, travel dates on the calendar. Wow. I didn't have no, no photo shoots. Scheduled. Right. I didn't have anything that these gifts represented. But see, the thing that you got to understand is that you want to be in relationships with people who believe in the craziness of your dream. Yes. Because if your dream is not crazy, it's not a good dream. So that's the first thing that we learn from, jo learn from Joseph. The second thing we learn from Joseph is this. We learn, mm -hmm. the Bible teaches us that Joseph didn't know Mary. Okay, for those of you who don't know what that means, that means we didn't have sex until Jesus was born. Now, we know that they didn't have sex before Jesus was born because the Bible says that she was, it was the virgin birth. Right. So, okay. And my question for you is, you're in relationships with people, but sometimes you need to ask the, the person that you're in a relationship, relationship with, can you wait on me? Hmm. And I'm not even just talking about in a, in a physical intimacy uh, way. Can you wait on me to finish school? Can right. you wait on me to finish a goal? Yeah. I remember I was dating a girl, and um, I was in the process of getting my real estate license. I became a licensed realtor a year or so ago. And um, during the process of getting my real estate license, they teach you that um, getting a real estate license is really hard because it's a short course, and it's a lot of information in a compiled course. And so because of how um, short the course is, you really need to shut down the rest of the world and focus strictly on your study. So for the few weeks that I was in this course to get my real estate license, I um, I was being bugged because this girl wanted to take up all my time that I needed to be using study. Mm. I had work to do. She knew how important this was to me. And she would call me like, what you doing? I'm like, I'm studying. You know what I'm doing. I told you, <laughs> you know, I'm studying all day. She's like, so... You want to go to the movies? It's like everything I told you. Like, <laughs> in one ear and right out the other. I, I told her, I said, listen, I have no time to hang out. She did not have the discipline to wait on me to finish. Right. And because she couldn't wait, our relationship couldn't last. Talk and about it. With you. So the first thing you learn from Joseph is that he believed in man? the legitimacy of what she was carrying when nobody else did. Mm -hmm. He believed in her. Two... He was willing to wait. And the third thing I love about Joseph is that Joseph had backbone. Hmm. Now let me explain that. See, when you look at the holy family, which is Jesus and his, his family members, I'm gonna, let, me, let me say this. My father taught me that in a relationship, you have a pitcher and you have a friend. He said that the person who is the star of the relationship is the pitcher, and the other person who supports them is the frame. Mm. Usually when we think of a picture in the frame, we think of a father and a mother, right? Mm. But in this situation, 
The picture in this family was Jesus. He's only I think, 23. We can, I think we can agree that Jesus was the picture of the family. He was the star of the show. Yes. According to how we talk about the story, Mary was the friend. Right. She birthed him. She supported him. She was that, that anchor. But what was Joseph? Hmm. You know what Joseph was? Joseph was that little kickstand mm -hmm. at the back of all picture frames mm -hmm. that hold the picture up. Yeah. That was Joseph. Yes. He was so secure in himself mm. that he was willing to make sacrifices That's good. so that the will of God could be That's done good. through Jesus. Talk about, say it again. Yes. And, and, and here's where I'm, I'm, I, I want to show you the backbone that Joseph had. When Jesus was born... The king, he made a decree that all young boys were going to be killed. So um, an angel came to Joseph. The angel didn't come to Mary. Right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Right. Jesus' first miracle was not that he heard from an angel as a baby. The angel came to Joseph <laughs> My. and said, take your family to Egypt because that's where they can be protected. Mm -hmm. So you know what Joseph did? He said, hey, come on, get the baby. Let's go. He took his family, they went to Egypt. See, we give Mary credit for everything. Right. But if it wasn't for Joseph, That's Jesus good. would not have became That's what so he good. Became. One, he probably wouldn't have survived. Right. But two, here's what people tend to forget. Joseph was a carpenter. Yes. Do you all know what Jesus was before he started preaching? Carpenter. A carpenter. He was a carpenter, mm -hmm. which means that he influenced yes. the king of kings. Yes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so you want somebody who, one, believes in you, mm. two, will wait on you, mm -hmm. and three, has backbone and enough strength to be able to lead you yes. when you need to be led and can hear from God. So the affirmation, let's say it again. Uh, I, which one was it? Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I am aware of what I need in a relationship. Say that for me. I am aware of what I need in a relationship. Next affirmation is this. I am winning in a losing world. I, I am, am winning, winning in a losing world. world. I'm going to be honest with you all. Um, I've experienced an emotion lately that I've, I really haven't really experienced much in my life. I'm going to be honest with you all. I've been scared. Hmm. And the reason I've been scared is because they are killing black men. Yes. For nothing. For sport. Thank you. All lives matter. Please understand me. Believe me. I love everybody. Black people. White people. Mexican people. No matter what. who you are, I love you. You're my family. But right now, there is a hunt mm. on black men. And for me, I have taken pride in being a proper Black man. Mm -hmm. I've taken pride because everywhere I go, authority respects me. Because mm -hmm. I carry myself like a gentleman. Yes. I walk with pride. I wear a suit. I, 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 I say yes sir, yes ma'am. But I recently learned that you can be obedient mm. and still get killed. My. When you look at this Minnesota situation, he said, get your ID. My man got shot for getting his ID. My. You can't do the whole thing of you need to respect the cops right. and then shoot people who are obedient. Mm. And so we're living in a world where there's a lot of turmoil. I'm not really into politics, but this political race is scary. Scary. Oh, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just going to tell it like it is, you know. I think if you're going to be president, I think you at least need to have your own hair. <laughs> Talk machine. <laughs> yes. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, but I'm not here for that. We live in a world where there's a lot of turmoil, but here's the thing that we have to understand as Christians. We have to look at the word of God. Yes. Because everything that's going on has happened before. Right. In the book of Genesis, mm. there was a famine. Mm-hmm in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Joseph, who I will talk about a little later, he gave Pharaoh 
um, plans on how the people of Egypt could survive the famine. Right. And so when uh, Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, when he uh, was impacted by the famine, he sent his sons to, um, to Egypt to get food. And um, at the end of the story, Joseph moves his family to Egypt, but he moves them to a land called Goshen. Yes. And the land of Goshen was a place that was not impacted by the famine. This was a place where the famine didn't exist. And the Lord, he showed me the other day, he said, George, you are in the land of Goshen. Yes. He said, stop being afraid of what you see on Facebook. Yes. Because that's the new news now. Right. He said, stop being afraid of what you see online. He said, you are in the land of Goshen. Mm. And I thought about it, and I said, man, you're, Lord, you're right. And when I look at my life, I, you're looking at a college reject. See, we judge books by the, by, by the cover, mm -hmm. and if you look at me, you say, oh, he looked like he probably went to school. No, I didn't. I applied for the school I wanted to go to. They said no. It hurt my feelings. I didn't try again. My. You can laugh, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, college isn't for me. This is before I became a motivator, this is before I found my purpose. I was like, cool, no college for me. I have had numerous business opportunities fail. Mm -hmm. And what turned my life around is what I'm teaching now about the power of affirmations. And so I started using affirmations, and I noticed that my life began to just shift. Things began to happen. Yes. Everything began to move into place. And, and, and before I knew it, I was living a life, or I'm beginning to live a life that I'm not supposed to really live. Right. <laughs> I'm in a place right now. Yeah. I'm in a place right now. Thank you so much. I'm in a place right now where right. the college reject. Yeah. I, I'm getting invited to travel around this country going to colleges. Isn't that something? Giving motivational speeches to people who are doing what I wasn't able to do. My. My father is a Harvard graduate. My brother is a Morehouse graduate. Me, I'm a no graduate. <laughs> but let me, tell you, let, me tell you, let me tell you what God would do. I go to schools. Schools pay me more for one hour of speaking. My. Than I would make in a full week at my last job. Talk about it. One hour of my passion paid me more than a full week of what I hated. My. I am in my land of Goshen. Yes, you are. Listen, listen. Right now, my manager is here and she can, she can tell you I'm telling the truth. I am in negotiations with $2 billion companies who are looking to partner with me to help me take my motivational vision to the world. My. The college reject. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Talk, sir. And so what we have to understand is that God can take you. Yes. And he can hide you in such a way where you don't have to worry about what the yes, world, God. The world has going on. Mm. Mm. You don't have to worry about that. I was on, I was on a plane today and um, the, the, the um, the, uh, this is what I noticed, and y'all gotta go with me for a second. When the plane is going up, before it gets to the high altitude where it levels off, on the way up, it, 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 it encounters a lot of turbulence. Mm -hmm. The plane shakes. Right. And what you have to understand is that on your way up, mm. the journey is not gonna be easy. No. It's going to shake. Things are going to be uncomfortable. You're going to find out that before you're winning, you're going to be scared. But soon, I noticed that the plane leveled off. Now, here's the thing that you have to understand. Remember, I told you, I'm in my land of Goshen. I'm not worried about nothing. I'm not worried about being hurt. I'm not worried about poverty. I'm not worried about none of that. The lady that I was sitting next to while the plane was shaking, she said, I don't like this plane shaking. That makes me nervous. And I looked over at her, and without blinking my eye, I said, listen, this plane can't go down. I'm on it. That's right. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. yes. I said, this plane ain't going down. I'm on this plane. Uh-huh. 
Talk and when you home. understand who you are, mm -hmm. you expect to win. All right. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now y'all know me. I know you now. We cool. So y'all can talk back to me when I talk to y'all. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. Yes. When you are in your when you are in your season, you don't have to worry about these things. Mm -mm -mm. So the affirmation again: I am winning in a losing world. I am, I am winning, winning in a losing world. world. Next affirmation: Since we're talking to singles, I am dating on the level that I am going. I am dating on the level that I am going. Last week I was uh, speaking and doing a lot of different stuff in Memphis, Tennessee. I spoke, played drums, sung. I was at a convention last week in Memphis. And uh, I got on, a, on an elevator that was crowded. Now, I personally hate crowded elevators. It's not that I'm claustrophobic, but I just don't like it. So I got on the elevator. And the only thing worse than being on a crowded elevator is having a room on one of the top floors. Because right. that means your ride is going to be long. So I squeezed on the elevator, I hit the 10th floor button. And um, what I noticed is that as we went from floor to floor, more and more people start to get off. Mm -hmm. And as more and more people begin to get off, yes. the more comfortable the ride got. Right. By the time we got to the 10th floor where I was standing, it was only me and one other person. Mm -hmm. Which means that when I got on, it was crowded and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. By the time we got to my floor, mm -hmm. it was perfectly comfortable. Mm -hmm. What is the revelation of that? Hear this. As you are going up in life, when you get to the top, there's going to be less people on the top I know it's right. than at the bottom when you start. Yes. Y'all hear what I'm saying? When you get, as you rise, there's going to be less people on your rise than there was when you first got started. Come on. And here's the thing. I'm not talking to a room of losers or defeated people. Everybody in here, you're a king and a queen. Yes. And as you rise, as you rise, what you're going to find out is that as you grow, your taste is going to grow. Yes. Your speech is going to grow. Yes. The way you dress is going to grow. Yes. And sometimes we're with people who are not growing with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we're with people who can handle our now, but mm -hmm. they can't handle our next. Come on. You know what I'm saying? We are with people who can handle our now, but not handle our next. Mm -hmm. If you know the story of our president, President Barack Obama, and his wife, First Lady Michelle Obama, you will actually find out that Michelle Obama, when they met, she was more successful than he was. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, if I can take it a step further, he started working for her, mm -hmm. our commander in chief. Right. But what happened was he linked up with somebody who was more serious or just as serious about growing as he was. Right. And because of that, they, they met each other at the top. Yes. Let's say that affirmation again. I am dating people on the level that I'm going. I am dating people on the level that I am going. Next affirmation, say this. I am comfortable in my own skin. I am comfortable in my own skin. I am, um, this, this affirmation to me is, is kind of funny because what I found out is that the most attractive thing that anybody could have is confidence. Confidence is the most attractive thing that anyone can have. And when you don't have confidence, you find out that you envy people who have what you don't have because you see that people like that. Yes. So what you do is you spend your time, and you spend your life trying to be like them. As soon as you get like them, you find out that there's somebody else who doesn't have what they have, mm -hmm. but people seem to like them too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an example. As a man, sometimes I hear women say, thank you so much, ooh, I like a dark. <laughs> <laughs> so being that I ain't that dark, <laughs> I'm feeling kind of bad, so I go out in the sun, and I just be like, shine on me, you know, <laughs> give me some more melody, you know, get, come on, I want to get darker. 
And so as soon as my goals become darker, mm -hmm. then another woman says, you know, I like them with muscles. So I sit back, okay, she likes them dark. She likes them with muscles, so I'm over here doing push-ups. I'm, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm doing my push-ups, I'm getting my muscles up. And before you know it, y'all not gonna believe this one. But then I hear some women say, I like them chubby. Ah! I, I like a man with some meat on his bone. Well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I follow Rick Ross on Instagram, <laughs> and I see some of the comments he gets on pictures. I'm like, man, I need to eat some more chicken. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going to sleep with some milk and cookies and ice cream tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and then, 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 I hear another woman say, I like him tall. And I'm like, yes, because I'm at least 6'1", so I'm straight. I'm, I'm good. And I feel good about myself all the way up until Prince died. And then I found out that all these women were in love with the purple one. And Prince <laughs> was nothing but about 4'8 with heels on. 4'8. <laughs> so now I'm wishing I'm short. <laughs> the problem is this. You have to be comfortable in your own skin. Yes. Because until you're comfor comfortable in your own skin, you're going to think everybody else is perfect but yourself. Right. And so what happens is we have a group of people who are making changes to themselves mm. to impress other people, but it's not something that, that, that they really want for themselves. See, if you're going to make a change to yourself, it should be to enhance the quality of your life. Yes. Not to impress other people. Because when you find your confidence in yourself, there are people who are picked out and selected to like your type. Yes. There are people who like your type, but what turns them off is the fact that you, you don't, don't like, like your, your type. type. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So let's say that again. Let's say that again. I am comfortable in my own skin. I am comfortable in my own skin. All right. Next one. I am not too old. I am not too young. I am just right. I am not too old. I am not too young. I am just right. Exactly. This reminds me of the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears <laughs> when she went into the house and she saw the, the, um, the porridge. Mm -hmm. And when she tasted the porridge from the big bear, she said, that's too hot. When she tasted the porridge from the medium-sized bear, she said, that's too cold. When she tasted the porridge from the baby bear, she said, that's just right. Mm -hmm. I flew all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, just to tell you that you are just right. Amen. Amen. See, here's the thing. We have, especially in the church, we have a timeline for when we want God to do certain things in our life. My, talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Can I be honest with you? Yes, sir. By a certain time in your life, you want to be married. Right. Have children. Right. Have this car. Right. Have this house. Uh-huh. Have these friends. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, this is what I found out. I found out that God's plan is not always our plan. Right. And it's not that he's against us having these things, but he wants to give it to us in his time. Yes. And so when these things happen on his time, because we don't see it as being his time, mm. we think it's supposed to never happen. Right. And so there are some people... Who, um, I'm, 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 I'm gonna tell you the story. In 2007, Tyler Perry put out um, a movie called um, Daddy's Little Girl, starring Idris Elba and Gabrielle Union. One of my favorite scenes of this movie was when Gabrielle Union was set up on a date with this gentleman and they went to a very nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it was a restaurant that he's never been to. See, he was used to the fish fry shack but they went to a restaurant that, you know, has multiple forks and multiple spoons. It was a really nice restaurant. And so he, um, he said, so what you do? And she said, I'm a lawyer. And he says to her, he says, so you make good money. So you got this, right? Uh. And so she's like, oh, God, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. So she asked him, she said, so what do you do? And his, re his reply to her is, I'm a rapper. 
When she got back with her friends, she said, I can't be with him. He's a 40-year-old rapper. <laughs> <laughs> now, after this, I started seeing jokes that said things along the lines 40%. of, you know, you can't, um, or how, how did they say? They said, never give up on your dreams unless you want to be a rapper over the age of 30 something. Wow. And that bothered me because everybody was laughing. But there are people who are older who have giftings that they don't want to unlock because they feel like they're too old. My. Some of you, as I look at, look at this room, there's people who are really young and there are people who are just a little bit more seasoned. And some of you, you have given up on your dreams because you feel like you're too old. Mm. Some of you have given up on the idea of marriage because if it hasn't happened yet, it's not going to happen. Wow. And what I'm here to tell you is that you were just right. Some of us were young. And, and, and the thing is, I... Um, yeah, he I, didn't uh, call us old. I always had, had thought it was funny because I would go to an old woman and I'm like, hey, you know, what's up? How you doing? And she'd be like, oh, you too young. And I used to hurt my feelings. Like, Rachel, why are you shut telling up. me I'm too young? You know, why, why I got to be salt. too young? And you know what? Confidence rolls up in me. And when they would start saying you're too young, I said, no, I ain't too young. You're just too old. <laughs> <laughs> you put it in the right perspective. And who you are. Yes. You know, people people will try to say, oh, you too old for that. No, I'm not. I'm just right. You too young. No, I'm not. You missing out. Not me. Right. Let's say that again. I'm not too old. I'm not too young. I'm just right. I'm, I'm not, not too old. old. I'm, I'm not, not too young. young. I am yeah. just right. All right. This next one is a tough one for me because I'm about to make a confession that I've never made publicly. I'm about to tell you all something that I've never told a group of people in my life. This is very serious. This is, I'm, I'm really stepping out of my comfort zone. This I am keeping myself while I wait. Ooh, I am keeping I am myself keeping while I wait. I am. Um, I never, I, never, I never told anybody this because for most of my life, I was ashamed of it. I was ashamed because I, I thought that I wasn't cool unless I went down a certain route. Right. I'm 23 years old, and I'm proud to tell you all that I'm still a virgin. Amen. Amen. Y'all better clap it up for that. I'm not, I'm not married. And I'm still a virgin. Amen. Yes. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. Growing up, I always thought that, that was a, something weird. Like, oh my God, man. And this is what I did. I'm going to be honest with you. This is what I did. I told God, I said, Lord, I'm going to give you until a certain age. Once I get to this age, if I'm not married, I'm messing up. Wow. Do I have a witness in the back? Yeah, I did that. I told God that. I, I told him that. I told him, I said, Lord, if you don't give, see, let me tell you something. I might be from Atlanta, but I show it to gay. I know that's right. <laughs> and so, as a man, we take pride, I'm just going to be honest with you, we take pride in conquering women. Mm -hmm. That's what men do. Right. I told God, I said, look, I'm giving you until a certain age. If you don't do it, I'm messing up. You never want to blackmail God. No. <laughs> you never want to tell God what you're going to do if he doesn't do something. Ooh wee. Because here's the thing. He's stronger than you. Yes. He can wait longer than you. Oh, yes. He, he, he's not phased by what you say you're going to do mm -hmm. if you don't do what you tell him he's going to do. <laughs> I met a woman one time and she said, I'm turning such and such age next year. She said, Lord, don't give me a husband. I'm messing up. Now, I, I looked at her. I thought about it. I said, you know he hear you, right? <laughs> so you mean to tell me God's going to listen to you talk about something. 
I'm gonna mess up if you don't give me a mate. And he's gonna be like, oh, let me get her a mate real quick. <laughs> uh, no. That ain't how it works. That's, that's, unfortunately, I'm sorry, but that's not how it works. So pe people come, and whenever I tell somebody this in person, they ask me questions like, so how is it? How, you know, how do you feel? I'm miserable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Did, did I say something that offended you? No, See, no. Because the thing is, we're not real about our walk of Christ. Come on. Right. We don't tell the truth. Come on. Oh, we just make it like, oh, all you got to do is pray, mm. fast, and stay in your word. Listen, I prayed. Yeah. I got my word, and she was still cute. Okay. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yes. And so what happened is, what happened is, God showed me something. He, it, 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 I mean, it was crazy. I promised God, I said, Lord, I said, I'm going to wait until you give me my spouse. Mm -hmm. And I told God, I said, if you never do it, yes. heaven is more important yes, than, yes. than the pleasure of my flesh. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. And until we get to that point, we're not going to make it. I know it's right. We're not going to make it. So I told him, I said, Lord, I'm going to hold on. And so the Lord gave, he showed me something. He said, anything that makes you miserable should make you money. Mm. I'm going to say that again. Anything that makes you miserable should make you money. Which means that if you're miserable and you're not making money, you're playing the game wrong. The game is playing you. The game is playing you. Wow. Which means this. Which means 